What is up, so Hills kids? I hope you guys are doing great. Happy Sunday, or Monday, or Tuesday, or whenever you're watching this. I'm glad you're watching it, is the point. Whether you're a so Hills kid, 4, 5, 6, All-Stars, or even Treehouse, or you're just out adventuring in the world of YouTube, or the online internet webs, I'm glad you guys are here. I hope you guys are having a great day, no matter what. I hope you're ready for today's lesson. Today, we're talking about a relatively popular character in the Bible, Samson. If you've ever been to Sunday school, or you've been to church for a little bit, you probably know the story of Samson, but today we're going to focus on, well, Samson's ugly side. And you see, we like to look at Samson as the big, strong hero, right? He defeated the Philistines and the donkey jawbone and all sorts of stories about that, right? That he was super strong and super powerful because the Lord gave him that strength. What we don't look at is that ultimately his death was a result of, of sin and disobedience. And so we're going to take a look at that today. So let's recap the story and then let's look at what we can learn from it. So you guys jump along with me. So if you're unfamiliar with the story of Samson or you just need a little refresher like we all do, let's jump into it. So basically, God sent the people called Judges. Um, after Israel had come into the promised land. Now, we know that Israel sinned and disobeyed God, and because of that, they did not receive the full promised land, and they still had enemies within their territory. Now, these enemies would often attack Israel and often overpower them because they were not obedient to God. And because of this disobedience, they lost favor with God, and God stopped helping them as much, which meant they tried to do things on their own. And when they tried to do things on their own, it didn't end well. Now, eventually, the Lord would have mercy on the people of Israel. They would cry out to him, and he would send a judge. And a judge was somebody um, who, with God's uh, abilities and powers, would be able to defeat um, whoever was plaguing them, whoever was raiding them, or, you know, capturing them, or whatever it was that they were dealing with. Now, Samson was a judge. He was sent by God to help them deliver, and uh, his specific enemy was the Philistines, who, if you read the Bible, is a constant enemy to the Israelites. Now, uh, Samson was a judge for that, and he was given supernatural strength. I'm talking superhero power strength, right? There's a story where he just lifts off these iron gates off of a wall, just kind of walks away with them, right? Like super strong, way beyond what anyone has ever done. Like, you know those like power lifters that lift a thousand pounds? Like Samson was far beyond that. He, like, he could do a lot of crazy things because of his strength. So God gives him the strength, and he tells him two things. He says, you can't ever have any wine, and you can't ever cut your hair. Um, and if you do these things, you're going to lose your power. And so Samson knows this growing up. He tells his parents, and Samson never cuts his hair. So you can imagine once he gets older, he's probably got some luscious locks, right? He's just flowing. Um, and Samson's doing good, right? He's defeating the Philistines in these battles, but he has this little issue. One, he gets really angry. He has some anger issues. And two... He's got some girl issues. He's got a crush on this girl, and she's not great. You see, God wanted the people to marry within the Israelites, which means that they would marry someone who also worshipped God, right? But Samson had his eye on somebody else. Her name was Delilah, and apparently he liked her a lot. So, and she, here's the thing. She wasn't a Israelite. She worshipped other gods. Now, generally... If we want to stay away from a temptation, right, like worshiping other gods, the people of Israel really struggled with that. We would want to remove ourselves from people, right? If we wanted to stay away from people who uh, were like bullying and being unkind and we didn't want to do that, we wouldn't go hang out with them more. But Samson, he chose to hang out with somebody he shouldn't have, right? We see that Samson begins to choose sin over God. And he starts talking to Delilah, and Delilah's like, oh, how are you so strong? And Samson's like, oh, I can't tell you. But eventually, she gets under him enough, and he likes her enough that he tells her. Right here in uh, Judges chapter 16, uh, verse 17, it says, Finally, Samson shared his secret with her. My hair has never been cut, he confessed. For when I was dedicated to God as a Nazarite from birth, if my head were shaved, my strength would leave me, and I would become as weak as... As anyone else. Now, Samson had already told Delilah several fake ways to bind him and to capture and defeat him. Now, if you've got any brains who would think, if somebody's trying to find my weakness, maybe they want to get rid of me. But Samson was love smitten, and he had been choosing sin long enough that he was blind. He wanted what he wanted, and it didn't matter what anybody else wanted. And it says Delilah realized he had finally told her the truth. So he sent for the Philistine rulers. Come back one more time, she said, for he has finally told me his secret. 
So the Philistine rulers returned with the money in their hands, and Delilah lulled Samson to sleep with his head in her lap. Then she called a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair. In this way, she began to bring him down, and his strength left him. When he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. But he didn't realize the Lord had left him. So the Philistines captured him, gouged his eyes out, and they took him to Gaza, where he was bound with bronze chains and forced to grind grain in the prison. So, Samson didn't listen. He sinned. He followed his own path. He wanted to do what he wanted to do. And what are we talking about, guys? We're talking about what is the wage of sin? The wage of sin is death, right? Which means nothing good comes from sin. It makes us dirty. We make bad choices. And the more and more we have sin in our lives, the less we see it and the less we realize the road we're going down is a bad And Samson didn't realize the road he was going down with Delilah, but when he shared his secret, he shared his strength, and he also didn't realize that he shared his connection with God. You see, that hair wasn't just hair, right? It wasn't just, it wasn't what gave his powers. It was God that gave him the powers, and when he shaved his head, he cut his connection to God and cut his connection to those powers. And so he was captured. He was put in jail. He was forced to grind grain. But even despite his sin, God uses him. If we look down, it says that Samson was taken to a temple, right? He was taken to the temple by the Philistines um, for them to basically brag, to say, look, we caught Samson. And it says, Samson prayed to the Lord, sovereign Lord, remember me again, O God, and please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Still kind of thinking about himself, but it says Samson put his hands on the two center pillars that held up the temple, and pushing against them with both hands, he prayed, let me die with the Philistines, and the temple crashed down on the Philistine rulers and all the people. So, Samson, he messed up. He sinned. He let sin carry him into a place he should not have been. You see, guys, in our own lives, when we let sin continue in our lives, when we don't try and stop it and we don't ask for help with it, it's going to end up getting worse and worse and worse. At first, Samson didn't reveal his secret, but even pretending to reveal his secret was playing with fire, and eventually he got burned when he told Delilah his true secret. You see, he let his love be a distraction, and we can let our own sin be a distraction, right? Our disobedience to our parents can continue happening because we just want what we want, right? We'd rather be playing video games or hanging out with our friends or whatever else besides cleaning our room or doing our homework, right? And if we let that continue, well, it's just going to keep causing problems. You see, we allow sin to cause issues in our lives, and if we don't address them, they're just going to get worse. So how can we stop them? Luckily, guys, we have a plan, right? There's a guy named Jesus, and Jesus came down on earth, and he lived a perfect life, and he died a death he did not deserve because he was perfect, but then he rose again on the third day, and now he says that whoever comes to him, when we accept him and acknowledge him as our savior, he will free us from our sins. Now, what does that mean? It doesn't mean that we are free from sinning and we'll never sin again, but it means that our sins are not counted against us, and we now have the power through the Holy Spirit to defeat sin in our lives. So if that's something you're struggling with, talk to your parents. Talk to a teacher that you trust that knows the Bible, or talk to one of your Sunday school teachers or somebody like that. But talk to somebody and dive in to what it looks like to trust Jesus with your sin. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'm going to see you guys next week. And if you want to watch the Bible story, you can watch it after this. Bye. The Israelites were God's people but they were stuck in a pattern of ignoring God, being attacked by enemies, and then calling out to God to rescue them. When the Israelites ignored God again, God let their enemies, the Philistines, rule over them. One day, the angel of the Lord spoke to a man and his wife. The angel said that they would have a son, and their son would save God's people from the Philistines. God had special instructions for their son, he should never cut his hair. The couple had a baby boy, and they named him Samson. God made Samson strong. When Samson grew up, he decided he wanted to marry a Philistine woman. 
Samson, and his parents went to meet her. Along the way, a lion jumped out, and Samson killed the lion. Later, bees made honey in the lion's body. Samson ate some of the honey and gave some to his parents. When Samson got married, he told a riddle to a group of Philistines at the wedding. Out of the eater came something to eat, and out of the straw came something sweet. The riddle was about the lion and the honey, but the Philistines could not figure it out. They asked Samson's bride for help. She told the men the answer. Samson was angry, and he left without his wife. When he went back to get her, she was gone. Samson ran away to another city, where he fell in love with a woman named Delilah. The Philistines wanted to know why Samson was so strong, so they gave Delilah money to help them find out. Samson told Delilah, "If you tie me up, I will be weak." But that was not true. Then Samson said, "If you weave my hair into a loom, I will be weak." Again, this was a lie. Finally, Samson told Delilah the truth: "If you cut my hair, I will be weak." So when Samson was sleeping, a Philistine came and cut his hair. Samson wasn't strong anymore. The Philistines grabbed him, and they took him away in chains. One day. The Philistines made Samson stand between two pillars in their temple. Samson cried out to God, "Lord, strengthen me once more." So God strengthened Samson. Samson pushed on the pillars and collapsed the temple. Samson and everyone in the temple died, but Samson had saved the Israelites from the Philistines. Samson's sin led to his own death. But God used his death to save the Israelites from their enemies. Samson's story reminds us of Jesus. Jesus never sinned, but God sent him to die on the cross and rise again, to rescue people from sin and give them eternal life.